The opinions expressed on this program represent the viewpoints of individual authors or contributors and do not necessarily reflect those of Troy University. Welcome to eConversations. I'm your host, Dr. Dan Sutter of the Johnson Center for Political Economy at Troy University. Natural disasters, unfortunately, are inevitable. Hurricanes like the 2018 storms Florence and Michael will eventually strike and disrupt our communities. Earthquakes, tornadoes, and winter storms occur as well. In the aftermath of disasters, we often hear about reports of price gouging, which many people find reprehensible and states, including Alabama, pass laws criminalizing this economic behavior. What exactly does price gouging involve, and how do we as economists make sense of this? And what exactly does Alabama's law do, and how does it compare with the laws of some of our neighboring states? And could there be an alternative way to penalize the, the truly offensive behavior without necessarily preventing beneficial economic responses which are going to relieve the suffering of victims of natural disasters? Joining me on eConversations today to talk about a new paper he's written for the Johnson Center on Alabama's Unconscionable Pricing Act is Troy University master's student uh, Constantine Zukov. Welcome to the eConversation, Constantine. Thank you for having me here. Well, before we get started to talk about uh, uh, price gouging and hurricanes, mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about your, yourself and, and how you got to Troy University. Sure. Um, so. Uh, I'm originally from Russia, and uh, I got my master's from Norfolk University in Michigan. And then um, in my junior and senior uh, years at Norfolk, I got involved in the economics and really loved the subject. And then I've heard about the program at Troy University, uh, mm -hmm. about their specific focus, and uh, I applied here, and I'm really satisfied with my decision. And, and how do you like the Alabama? Uh, it's, it's different. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Here you can like you have everything to focus on your studies and don't have mm -hmm. any anything to like to to get your attention off the school. Uh, well, uh, we've certainly had uh, enjoyed having you in the, the program, Thank you. and uh, so you've been working on a, a uh, policy paper for the Johnson Center yes. to talk about this uh, law that Alabama has, mm -hmm. and so um, natural disasters happen, right? Yes, a and they uh, can sometimes, on sadly. Uh, dis totally destroy or disrupt communities, mm -hmm. uh, it cause millions of dollars of, of, of damage, can yeah. ruin people's uh, homes and businesses, mm -hmm. and then and also uh, it cause injury to life and limb. Yes. And uh, because we very recently had the, the, uh, the tragic example of Hurricane Michael, which mm -hmm. came very close to, to home here, hit, hitting the, uh, the panhandle of, of Florida. Yeah. But hurricanes, of course, aren't the only disaster, natural disaster that nature you know, deals out. We, we face other things, ice storms even, uh, mm -hmm. tornadoes here in Alabama happen often. And so when one of these, things, uh, one of these events sadly happens, we have all this disaster and, and uh, uh, damage in, in the aftermath. Mm -hmm. And people need help, right? They do, yeah. And, and but then we also hear this uh, discussion or concerns about uh, price gouging. I know be even before Hurricane Michael struck, uh, Alabama issued an a, a emergency <laughs> declaration and said in, in the uh, governor and attorney general were warning businesses about uh, price gouging. Mm -hmm. So. What happens here? What, this, for, before we get into it, let's first off talk about a little bit about like, what exactly do we mean by price gouging? Uh, price gouging is generally considered to be when uh, companies, when they increase the prices to the level where consumers cannot afford it anymore. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, a grave concern for, for the most people because when natural disasters strike, strike uh, what people need are different consumer goods like generators, water, just basic specific goods. And uh, what people are afraid of is that they won't be able to afford these goods mm -hmm. because the prices would be too large. Mm -hmm. And this is in general why price gouging laws are passed. This is why they are introduced because they have this very well good intention of protecting the consumers from um, from the sellers of the goods because they want to protect 
prices from rising too much and hence allowing, giving opportunity to people to buy the goods they actually need. In, in you mentioned this, but we people, especially if they haven't uh, studied a lot of economics, yeah. just seem to have a, a very, very strong mm -hmm. uh, emotional reaction yeah. to this whole, whole idea of, of price gouging. Yeah. And uh, it also shows up in some of the formal writing of Harvard philosopher Michael Sandel, mm -hmm. who's written on this, uh, it, it, uh, is formalizing or, or, or making this point more generally or for an academic audience. But people just really, really dislike the, uh, what, what goes on here with price gouging, yes. right? Uh, yeah, people do dislike price gouging because when natural disaster happen and many people are actually hurt and w when they need this consume, uh, when they need these uh, goods, then um, the general perception, and it's the right perception that these people, they need goods. They need something to relieve their uh, suffering. And when prices go too, too much up, when they increase too much, uh, then these people who have suffered, who have incurred all these losses, uh, they're pretty much like general con uh, the general consensus is that these people are preyed upon by these uh, sellers, by these producers who uh, neglect people's suffering and just want to make profit out of it. So, and this is why people feel strongly about it. And, and certainly, you know, contrasting that with the fact that many, many people contribute, you know, will give money to, uh, yes. you know, the Red Cross and, and, and mm -hmm. other uh, charities in the aftermath. And, and, and when you contrast with the people who are giving, uh, yes. giving things to, to help disaster victims, you certainly see then, like, the, the fact that other people are, are going to seemingly uh, profiteer or make yes. a, a huge profits off, off the suffering of, of disaster victims mm -hmm. is, is is another part of this, right? Yeah, certainly, and it's, uh, it seems like uh, uh, these sellers or producers that take advantage of the people who are weak right now, and that obviously incites many negative feelings from from everyone that it doesn't, it shouldn't happen. So, and this is why price gouging laws are usually introduced so to prevent this kind of behavior, so to actually help the consumers from being paid upon and having all the desired goods mm -hmm. to relieve their suffering. And to make just to be clear, I mean, in the aftermath, when you see somebody somebody who's quote price gouging, yeah. the the their customers are still voluntarily buying uh, yes. this, uh, uh, items, right? Yes, yes. So uh, they are they are still they're not actually stealing. Uh, from in some sense, it is something that people recognize. Like, oh, okay, he might be they, they would still play uh, voluntarily pay like say twelve dollars for a bag of ice. Yeah, certainly, uh, people are doing. Uh, they're making their conscious decision to actually go and buy these need uh, products because because they need them in, under mm. these circumstances and they generally need more of this uh, essential essential goods like water bread generators just mm -hmm. to kind of like uh, alleviate, alleviate help their suffering so right. and you know, and even if they're willing to pay uh, twelve dollars for ice, yeah. uh, you, you could you could make the argument that while they have to rebuild their lives, they're going to need that money for other yes. things, just to you know, mm -hmm. try to make uh, you know, whether it be medical bills or or rebuilding mm -hmm. uh, uh, rebuilding their homes and businesses and communities, and, and so that money could be better spent rather than mm -hmm. lining the pockets so of of, uh, of profiteers. Yeah, because these people have already suffered, so why making this suffering like increase? So, from an economic standpoint, if we want to try to make sense of these, this claim of, of price gouging, mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're going to use the uh, framework of supply and demand, and, so and it's uh, a, a powerful answer because, in effect, we like to put everything uh, mm -hmm. when we talk about markets in, in the framework of supply and demand. So, if you could tell us a little bit about su what exactly supply and demand are and how that uh, helps us think about what, what goes on in markets. Uh, certainly. So, the market consists of um, of supply and demand. Uh, demand is um, all the goods in the market that are desired by the consumers that uh, the consumers would like to purchase for their utilization, while, while supply is actually uh, uh, the goods in the market that are produced by, uh, by the sellers in order to satisfy the consumer's needs. Um, and it usually goes at, um, as uh, I could would you, would you mind if I talk about prices sure. now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so right. well, here, uh, supply and demand, they react differently to changes in the prices. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, when um, prices for some goods increase, 
uh, the general um, uh, consumers who, uh, who, whose interests are represented by the demand curve, uh, they usually decrease their demand uh, because they don't want to uh, pay that much for the good, mm -hmm. uh, while uh, suppliers, the producers, when the price increase, they actually try to supply more of the goods in order to capture uh, the benefit of supplying more products. And whenever a, a good gets traded in the marketplace, it has to be voluntarily traded. So we yes. have to have both a willing supplier Certainly. and a willing buyer. Yes. And, and then you know, we, we assume that there's going to be an equilibrium price that, that ends up getting sat, uh, ba sort of balancing these sure, uh, forces sure, yes. of supply and demand. Yes. And uh, actually, sellers here, they are actually kind of, um, they are fulfilling the interest of, of the public, of the consumers. They're not. Uh, preying on consumers, so actually trying to help them to satisfy the consumer's need. Mm -hmm. They are supplying the goods in order to actually help the consumers, not, 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 not in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And so this is our, our way of thinking about things, and then when something like, say, a, a hurricane happens, yes. we, uh, we like to interpret changes in the market in yes. terms of uh, shifts in either supply or demand. And uh, we, we can easily interpret some of the things that, that we observe mm -hmm. afterwards in terms of uh, affecting the either demand or supply of, uh, of some goods like, say, again, generators, building supplies, uh, and, and so uh, temp you know, hotel rooms or temporary housing, right? Yeah, so for example, when, uh, when for example, a hurricane hits uh, Florida or, or, or the over states on the shore, so what happens to supply is that supply actually tends to decrease because uh, there is uh, obstruction to the delivery of the goods to certain mm -hmm. locations, so the supply decreases, while uh, demand for the goods actually increases because uh, expecting that hurricane might actually affect people's lives, they try to uh, stock up with necessary goods, mm -hmm. so uh, the demand for the goods increases and so does the price actually. And, and then if, uh, for instance, if the electric power is out, that uh, leads to demand for goods that you normally wouldn't, uh, uh, wouldn't buy. Yeah, certainly, and demand actually, in, in general, it increases more because even for the goods like generators, when your electricity is out, you, well, you need to somehow uh, cook your food or you might, might need some, you might need it for something else. So your demand for generators, it just grows up significantly compared mm -hmm. to the state of affairs when everything is fine. And so is uh, so is the case with other goods like uh, water because you need so much water when the, the hurricane hits, or with food or other supplies. So the demand actually increases significantly. Now, what often strikes people as is, is very hard to make sense of is mm -hmm. that you could see in the aftermath of say Hurricane Matthew, you mm -hmm. know, you, you could see a, a, you know ice that might normally sell for two dollars a bag and be so inconsequential that I mean you, you wouldn't even think about like oh well how can you get some ice because you know it's at, at, at every convenience store. Mm -hmm. After a disaster, maybe that ice is going to be selling for ten or twelve or, or fifteen dollars a, yeah. a bag. I mean, how can we make sense of, fr from an economic standpoint, such a huge sh jump in, in the mm. price of a good within the span of just a few days? I yes. mean, that somehow, like all of a sudden, like ice is hard, we have we lost? You know, we, we, we haven't lost profit. the recipe. We, you know, mm -hmm. it's not. How how can you see? Uh, how can we justify or, or make sense of such huge price changes? And not only over time, but over small periods of mm -hmm. uh, di small distance. You go a couple hundred miles away out, out of the uh, area where the hurricanes made landfall, I ice will still be plentifully available. Mm -hmm. right? uh, so the price increase, uh, it's it's a pri this price adjustment uh, in where price actually goes up is due to the fact when that uh, because of the natural disaster. Uh, demand for the products for the ice increases and people demand more of it, uh, meaning that they're willing uh, to to pay more uh, for this bag of ice at the moment. And while and at the same time, supply of ice might actually decrease because of, uh, of the problems of sellers delivering ice to, to the stations, to locations where people actually need it, mm -hmm. uh, which tends to, like, both of these forces tend to increase the price. Um, so if it's a uh, so if we see, for example, like on the demand and supply curves, they they both move in that direction, so to make the price higher. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so we've had two things happen that are going to both uh, the increase uh, in demand and then the yep. decrease in supply yes. both separately would serve to drive up the price. Certainly. And then you, you made a, a point I think is really important that we need to expand on, and, and that is like uh, the, the, pro the products that you need, where you need them, and when you need them, right? Yes. And, and that's really, really uh, important for mm -hmm. economics. Yes, and uh, prices actually uh, are doing a really good job in showing where um, consumers' demands are actually increases, where they're increasing needs that need to be satisfied, uh, because this increase in pr price, um, the price increases so so fast and so drastically, and it shows the it it, it is capable of portraying uh, this need for goods like over large distance, for example, mm -hmm. that uh, suppliers from other states can actually see the in the increase in price, and uh, it it is a signal for them that they need to satisfy uh, this demand, and hence motivates them to actually supply these products to these locations. Um, so in a way, prices are actually, uh, they act as, as signals, as immediate signals of mm -hmm. uh, the desires that they need to be satisfied at this very moment of time. In, in economics, uh, our whole model of supply and demand, demand is about value, creating value to consumers. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, having the exact goods that you need at the time that you need it, yeah. not like a month from now or a week from now, Actually right and now. exactly where you need it. I mean, you know, it, it doesn't matter that there's uh, warehouses full of ice in, say, Jackson, Mississippi, if you mm -hmm. need it in, in, in Panama place. City. Yes. Uh, so the prices, uh, uh, they do like an incredible job of coordinating their utilization of resources where, uh, for example, ice could be best utilized, as you said. Uh, if, for example, where is uh, Hurricane uh, in Florida, and then uh, there is a higher demand for for ice. Then ice will not be delivered to. Instead of switching the production of delivering ice to Mississippi, where hurricane has not affected it, instead producers will actually try to switch their production and supply to affected areas mm -hmm. in Florida because it's in their self-interest to uh, uh, to help the consumers' needs to elevate they are suffering and bring the eyes to, to these people. So from an economic standpoint, is, is there any necessary uh, compelling reason to have laws to, to prohibit uh, the, these price rises in the aftermath of disasters? Uh, there is really no reason to prohibit these price rises uh, because prices, they, as I have said before, uh, they portray information about consumers' demand mm -hmm. and uh, we have to understand that when hurricane hits a uh, particular area, uh, demand increases significantly compared to the normal circumstances. They actually need essential goods not right now, and uh, they need like them in higher quantities. And uh, prices are very important in conveying this information from consumers to suppliers, mm -hmm. so that suppliers are capable of seeing this information and helping people to supply these goods. So if you actually uh, try to prevent uh, changes in, uh, in prices, then suppliers will, 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 uh, will just not see uh, these signals. And as a result, they will not uh, supply these products because uh, they simply don't know that the products are desired there. Mm -hmm. uh, so under price gouging laws, that w what they generally do is that they prevent these signals from going uh, from consumers to sellers, and they are, in many ways, actually harmful for people they are actually meant to protect. Yeah, I, I like to think of it in terms of like uh, banning or preventing the price rise doesn't actually do anything to help to relieve the suffering of, of the, the people who've been, uh, yes. who are in need. Yes. I mean, it's like saying like, if somebody cuts their arm and they need a bandage to <laughs> stop the bleeding, yeah. saying, well, well, we don't want you to spend too much for that bandage, so we yes. won't let you buy that bandage for $10, yeah. but mm -hmm. you know, keeping them from buying the bandage for $10 that's doesn't actually happen. give them a bandage. Yes. You know, to, 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 so uh, the suffering needs to be alleviated. Yes. We need goods and services to alleviate that suffering. But we also still have uh, a, a strong, many people have a strong aversion to price gouging. And yes. so 
Uh, we, we do see states like Alabama uh, pass a price gouging law. And yeah. so one of the things you're, you're the, one of the main things you're trying to do in your, your paper for our, that you wrote for us is look at uh, different price gouging laws and mm -hmm. ask a number of different questions to sort of evaluate and compare and contrast the laws. So tell us some of the, the, the features of, of price gouging laws and, and yeah. how, they, how you seek to compare them. Uh, so um, I focus generally on uh, a few specific features that actually influence uh, the prices. And uh, I focused on these features across five states. Mm -hmm. um, so the first feature is uh, the price ceiling itself because price ceiling, uh, that price ceiling, for example, it could be, um, uh, for, for example, it could be that uh, prices cannot uh, increase at all. Mm -hmm. So like they, they fix at one point. Or for example, prices could be, um, uh, they could increase proportionally to the increases in cost. And this is what actually most of the states have. Mm -hmm. uh, they, especially Alabama, uh, they allow increases for the uh, for the prices proportionally to increases in the costs. Uh, and Alabama actually does slightly better than other states because it allows for increase of 25 percent mm -hmm. um, from uh, regardless of the increase in price that it is related to the costs. So it's it's slightly better, but it still could be improved and I will mm -hmm. elaborate on this okay. slightly later. Um, another feature is what to base these prices on mm -hmm. because, uh, and it's very important feature because if you base the prices on, uh, most of the states, uh, including Alabama, they base their price ceiling on uh, average prices of the goods uh, a month a month prior to the um, uh, to the state of emergency, mm -hmm. uh, while other states do it uh, immediately before the declaration, declaration of the state of the emergency, but that's also actually pretty harmful for the consumers because uh, tying prices to the, for example, the circumstances circumstances a month prior to the state mm -hmm. of emergency and now when actually hurricane has hit the, uh, the state as uh, completely different. So, so different, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we need to inc incorporate this idea into uh, making the policy decisions. Uh, the next feature is um, uh, how long is uh, the law um, is, uh, is it in effect, in, yeah. in, in, in fact mm -hmm. for. Um, uh, Alabama and mo most of the states actually have uh, the price gouging laws in effect for the uh, during the whole state of uh, declared state of emergency, which is really unlimited, mm -hmm. um, and only Florida actually has it for 60 days okay. from the declaration of state of emergency, uh, and uh, most of the states, and uh, Florida allows for new renew, 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 renewal of these laws, mm -hmm. which I will also elaborate slightly later on, uh, and uh, the punishment, which is another future that also inc uh, influences. Um, decisions of the suppliers. Uh, it's in Alabama. It's actually pretty severe compared to other states because uh, one-time fine ranges uh, can be up to one thousand mm -hmm. dollars, while the fines for uh, the whole day of operations could be up to twenty-five thousand um, dollars. And Alabama goes far further than that actually, and sometimes it can revoke the business licenses. Mm -hmm which is significant punishment for the producers. And, but uh, I, will, I could also elaborate on it slightly later. So then uh, as you looked across the different states, yeah. uh, were there things that you saw that you know, maybe Alabama uh, and any of these specific uh, items where uh, some of our neighboring states were, were doing better than us or? or um, I wouldn't say that any particular state was doing like better than other. Uh, Alabama was doing better uh, in the future of the price ceiling itself because mm -hmm. it allows, allows for increase in the in the cost and also increase allows for the 25 percent increase upon that. Uh, other states do not actually. Um, time frame is essentially the same across all the states. Mm -hmm. uh, they differ in some degrees, but it's it's really all the same. Um, then deviation from uh, price ceiling is also is not allowed in most states and it's generally punished. Uh, the length, uh, Florida differs in that it's only for 60 days, but then it can be renewed again under the circumstances, so it pretty much allows it for 
longer time. Um, Alabama is worse, it's certainly worse than other states, uh, along with Georgia, I believe, in terms of punishment, because mm -hmm. the punishment could be very severe. And one of the things that uh, a number of critics point out is, is some of the laws, uh, it's a little less uh, clear, less of a problem in Alabama, is that many times if you're a business or if you're an entrepreneur trying to sell after a disaster, you may not know if you're actually violating yes. the law or not. There could be quite a bit of uncertainty. That's uh, quite problematic. Isn't yes, it? it is certainly problematic that businesses they don't have uns uh, certainty about like about the laws whether they're going to violate it, and it's a uh, it could be a very significant deterrent from them from mm -hmm. actually supp supplying appropriate amount of goods in the market because if they, for example, afraid of losing the license and uh, or getting like a very large fine what's the point for them to actually uh, deliver in the ne required goods for consumers. But that's actually very significant because it, it actually affects the well-being of people mm -hmm. who the law is actually going to protect. So this is like another future of how this law can actually harm people it's supposed to protect. Right. Yeah, and th this policy uncertainty can be a, a really important uh, uh, consideration. Yes. Now, you propose uh, an alternative way of, of thinking about uh, if, if we do want to try to prevent unnecessary or, or uh, unconscionable uh, increases in, in price or, or profiteering, yeah. uh, a different way we could approach this other than putting a price ceiling or, or forbidding the prices from rise. So explain this for us. Uh, so uh, I focused again like uh, on the recommendation to how the, pr the policy could be improved. I focused on this for futures. For example, Alabama, it does a really good job of um, allowing the inc uh, proportional increase to the costs, mm -hmm. and it also allows for 25% increase in the, price ceiling, uh, in the prices, but it's really not enough when it comes to the natural disaster. What we want during the natural disasters is to have as much supply as possible, so to mm -hmm. help the people. Uh, so increasing uh, uh, the price, allowing the comp uh, firms to increase the price from 25% to say 50 or 100%, uh, along with allowing for proportional increase in costs, uh, that will certainly help uh, to um, help uh, help the firms to supply the products to the people. So, so one way of thinking about this is uh, try to make sure that a firm's profit doesn't go up. And so, you know, because again, people assume that, like, mm -hmm. oh, you see generators selling yes. for three times what they were selling for before, that, that the, the sellers must be making big uh, price, yes. big yeah. profits. But if their costs have gone up, yes. they might not be making, you know, they might be making the same profit a, as they did before, right? Yeah, certainly. So it's pretty much just uh, helping the companies to cover their costs in order to deliver all these goods to the people. Um, another future that I focused on is also that. Uh, Price ceiling not to be ba to be based on profit margin or the firms uh, the the, pr the profit margin that companies make, meaning that mm -hmm. uh, price ceiling should be tied to a percentage of uh, the percentage that companies make from every dollar during the particular time, which will also incentivize companies to actually deliver more of the um, of the products to the market. Um, the next future about the longevity, how long the, this mm -hmm. uh, price ceiling can actually be in effect for, it should also be changed so that um, it should be, it would start from declaration of the state of emergency, but then um, it should uh, it should be not too long. So it could end, for example, uh, once at the point when uh, supplying all the products becomes uh, Possible mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. of the uh, of elimination of all the obstructions, uh, which will limit uh, the period. The period, yeah. yes, and uh, also Interesting. eliminating the renewability. Well, this has been very fascinating, and thank you for coming out and talk about some of these details. Mm -hmm. And thanks for joining us. Join us again next time for another eConversations.